I've been using a Zoom H1 since 2015 to record the voice tracks for my YouTube videos when I'm out in the backcountry. As you can see, it's held together with uh, rubber bands these days after having dropped it on the concrete floor a couple times. I ordered the new Zoom F2 just over two months ago and I've had a couple of opportunities to take it out backpacking. In this little video, I'll tell you why the Zoom F2 might just be the perfect audio recorder for outdoor vloggers like myself. Or maybe it's not. Let's find out. Let's quickly review why you might want to use an audio recorder for your outdoor videos. First of all, a lot of times you'll be quite some distance from your camera and its microphone, which can give you lousy sound. With an audio recorder, you can be any distance from your camera and still get great quality. Hey, this is Kurt Pappy coming to you from the Superstition Wilderness near Phoenix, Arizona. Today we're at the first water site. And there's a, uh, old... Secondly, the bane of outdoor audio is wind noise. It's a little bit windy out here today. I haven't had this kind of wind since I was uh, summoning Mount Humphreys a couple years ago. And with a recorder with a lav mic, you can hide it inside your shirt to cut down on the wind. Third, you are going to get better quality sound than your smartphone or camera mic, even with an inexpensive lav mic. Fourth, shotgun mics are just way too heavy and bulky to take into the wilderness, though they're great in a studio. Last, you could use a wireless mic, but they are really spendy and can have electrical interference problems. The main downside to using a recorder is the extra step in post to sync the separate audio track to your video. But once you have that down, it only takes a couple of minutes. It's no big deal. So how does the F2 compare to my trusty H1? Well, let's have a look. First of all, it's less than half the size. And wait, if you're like me and you're humping your gear up and down the walls of the Grand Canyon, that's a huge consideration. How about sound quality? The H1 has a really good set of stereo microphones that I've used for recording music and B-roll sound in the wilderness. It's really great quality. I bought an inexpensive giant squid lav mic to plug into it and frankly I think it sounds a little better than the sound I get from the F2 system, but the F2 is more than adequate for my needs. Fourth recorders have a lav mic input jack, but the F2 has a nice screw lock to make sure it doesn't come loose. If you do a little searching you'll find reports of intermittent crackling with the movement of the F2 jack. I haven't experienced the problem, so perhaps Zoom corrected the issue before mine was shipped. The F2 gets a little bit better battery life, but honestly, my phone will run out of space for the video files long before I run out of juice in my audio recorder. The F2 does not do MP3, but on the other hand, they are mono tracks. By the way, there's a great side benefit for getting mono files from the F2. You don't have to use a DAW or some other tool to get rid of the empty right channel before importing to your video editor. Ever start editing a video only to find out that you only have audio coming out of one side? Well, that's what happens when you record audio into a stereo system like the H1. You only get one channel out of the two and then you have to cut the other one out. Everybody's talking about the 32-bit float format in the F2. That's nice and all, but people seem to be missing the fact that the real winner is the dual A to D converters, one with much less gain than the other. The firmware monitors the input level of the two A to Ds and switches to the lower gain A to D when clipping might be an issue. How about the cost? They're pretty close when you include a lav mic for the H1 but you pretty much have to get the F2 Bluetooth model. It doesn't have any buttons to change tracks for playback, so if you want to check that your audio sounded okay in the field, you pretty much have to have the Bluetooth and a smartphone with the app 
to cycle through the tracks on the memory card so you can listen to all your recordings. Speaking of which, the H1 was no great shakes for durability, as you can see, but it always worked. It still works. The socket and door for the micro SD card on the F2 are pretty flimsy, and I lost several files that I thought I recorded in the field because the SD card was loose in the slot. Bottom line, pay attention to the LEDs on the unit to make sure you are recording when you think you are. That's this little red LED right here. And check your work when you're done. I find the ear pods from my iPhone make a serviceable listening device, but if you have lightning connected ear pods, you'll have to bring an adapter or bring an old set of ear pods that have a 3.5 millimeter connector if you haven't tossed them in the trash already, which thank God I haven't, so I can still use this uh, out in the field of my F2. Here's some of the things I really like about the F2. First is the small size and weight. I can carry it in a shirt pocket and it clips nicely to a belt with this little clip on the back here and hides nicely beneath a shirt. I like the convenience of not having to level set before recording. Just turn it on and go. This may seem like a minor issue, but it keeps time much better than my old H1, which would get off by several hours and I like that because it makes it easy for me to identify by time which audio tracks go with which video clips. Some of the things I don't like about the F2 include the fairly low amplitude of recordings. It seems to err on the side of caution. The issue that I've encountered with this is some video editors limit you to a 400% audio gain, and even with that, my voice can still be too quiet. The little windscreen sponge falls off the lav mic just by brushing against a shirt collar and that's probably why Zoom gives you three of them because they know you're going to lose a couple of them. <clears throat> I wish they would have included a small status screen somewhere on the unit. Uh, I find the multicolor LEDs to be really cryptic. So what's my bottom line? Is the Zoom F2 going to replace my trusty H1? And the answer is yes, uh, in the field, when I'm not going to record any kind of music or, or um, B-roll sounds where I really need the, the stereo microphones that are in the H1. These, these are actually pretty darn good quality. And uh, I've gotten some, some great recordings in the wilderness. Um, uh, birds, babbling brooks, waterfalls, that kind of stuff with this guy, and that's occasionally helpful. Um, but if I'm going into, um, I'm going on a hike, a backpacking trip, and I'm uh, just recording a voiceover like this, uh, for, um, uh, for a video, uh, the F2 is going to be my, my recorder of choice. The, uh, the audio isn't quite as good with, uh, with the lavalier mic that comes with the F2 as the giant squid that I use with my H1, uh, but that's personal preference. Some people might find that uh, this mic, uh, this lavalier mic is actually better, a little bit sharper. Uh, but I like the, the bass quality, the lower frequency response on the giant squid mic. So, uh, but, you know, I really like the screw terminal on, the, uh, on this jack here. It really makes it um, uh, very, very dependable out in the field. So this is going to be kind of my workhorse with the H1 coming along for a ride uh, every once in a while on the exceptional occasion. So... That's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something about making a purchasing decision uh, about the F2. Uh, it's a great little unit and uh, if you're going to make high quality uh, YouTube videos or even just videos to uh, distribute with your family, um, you owe it to yourself to get good quality audio. Audio is half of the quality of a video and this will do a much better job than the native microphone on your camera uh, or smartphone. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, if this was helpful, please click like or subscribe down below and uh, we'll see you on the trail.